Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, yeah, we had a few exciting days. Uh, we, we managed to eventually get back home, at least our temporary home right now. Uh, it was pretty crazy. Uh, we had everything, flat tire, uh, our car broke down in the middle of nowhere, up in the mountains. Uh, it was it was pretty bad, but you know what, it's, it's good. We're safe. So I just wanted to talk shortly about uh, uh, why I chose to anchor the uh, strap down or anchor down the Humvee to, to our flatbed trailer the way I did. So what I did, I went with uh, four sections of a chain, uh, which was uh, four feet sections uh, with uh, anchor point in the edge, in the end, end there, and the binders. Uh, I really love using this kind of binders. Uh, so that's why I decided to go with those. Um, they're good. You basically won't have any surprises with those. It's kind of like pretty straightforward and it's very simple. We got four anchoring points. Uh, we did about almost uh, what thousand miles, I think. We did about thousand miles with this uh, setup right here, and it was all the way up on the mountains, uh, on the highway, plenty of different surfaces and plenty of different uh, roads we're on. But everything held up very well. So I'm, I, I feel confident, I like this. I talked with multiple people about what's the right way to do it, including uh, some uh, tow truck drivers. And I heard very simple thing. There is plenty of ways to do it. All of them are right. Uh, but I chose this way and it worked very well. So uh, you guys can do whatever you feel comfortable with, but this is what I did and it worked well. And I, I, I can't recommend uh, to do it or not to do it, but I would say this is what we did and it worked very well. The Humvee didn't move, everything was very stable, the tension it was always there. And uh, there you go, it's here and it's safe. Basically very simple, four anchoring points um, to the Humvee. It has like a specific places right here that you can anchor it down. And that's what we used. When we received the Humvee, uh, I asked the same question and they said, this setup is great. And they helped me kind of like to figure out what is the best way to, uh, to, to basically anchor the chains to the Humvee. And that was it. Uh, I've seen multiple different ways, but you know what guys, uh, you got to do what works for you and whatever is very, very safe. And this worked for us for about like 1000 miles, uh, worked well, I'm happy with that and I'm comfortable with that. Yes, over there, one of the handles are out of the trailer a little bit, which I understand that um, that could be a little bit of an issue, I guess, but you know what guys? I don't do it full time. That's not what I do. Uh, I don't tow things full time for a living. And uh, you know, this is might be not perfect, but it worked very well for us. And uh, I think that was uh, a, a way to do it that I was happy with. So we got two points in the front, and if you want to see the uh, rear as well, same way. Two more anchoring points. Worked pretty well. Hopefully it helped you, and uh, yeah.
I also wanted to talk about an issue we had when we uh, picked up the Humvee. Actually I knew about it before when we actually purchased the Humvee uh, that there is some kind of a diesel fuel line, uh, diesel leak, fuel leak uh, and um, it was pretty bad so um, we definitely noticed that there is um, a lot of diesel leaking and we saw it and we, we did get it in some videos as well when we picked up the Humvee. Uh, I wanted just to share a little bit about that so um, we can start to work on that and fix it because this is one of the first things I would like to fix because uh, I just don't like it when every time I start the engine there is a lot of diesel that, that leaks so anyway I think it's coming from here and if you can see that I think there is a bolt here that is not tight uh, and I think this is the diesel and water the, the water separator so basically make sure there is no um, water mixing with the diesel usually uh, that's a big big no-no big issue with with any type of um, any type of gasoline or diesel engines so anyway I just wanted to share about that shortly uh, I'm gonna start the engine the, the, the engine here soon and and we'll see where it's coming from right now I definitely can see that there is a lot of like marks of uh, and, and residue of like diesel around this area and that's where we think that it's coming from and also there is some more inside actually so it's, it's that bad it's a really bad uh, fuel leak so uh, yeah I'll give you an update shortly Obviously, uh, I started the engine just for um, less than a minute, and uh, definitely, as you can see, there is a leak. Um, I think it's from the top bolt over there, where the um, water separator is, but I'm not sure exactly. Uh, it looks like it, but it's very, very hard to see. Here, I'm going to try to climb up and show you guys. Uh, Seeing fighting. I think it's somewhere right here. Right this guy. Right there. It looks like it's coming from there. Uh, and it's it's getting worse and worse uh, when Basically, when the, the engine is running, it's like, I guess the pressure goes up and uh, it's pretty bad. So, yeah, let's see how to fix it. Alright guys, so I found out 
the, actually this bolt, the breather bolt, actually needs a little o-ring on it. And this one was missing. This one didn't have o-ring on it. That's why I had this uh, big fuel leak. So what I did, I found one. I actually bought one. They're very cheap. I think it was a few cents. And put it in here on the bolt. And that's it. And it looked like uh, it worked. It looked like that stopped the loop. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, put it back on the um, put it back on the uh, fuel and water separator and see how it works see if it stops the leak completely I think it will but uh, yeah let's put it back on and see this is where it goes the slow bolt tighten it a lot just a little bit so I get a good seal on it and that's it We start the engine here and um, see if it solved the problem. Alright, looks like it's not working anymore. Alright, looks like this solved the problem. Alright guys, so uh, here's the deal. The Humvee's been on the trailer for a few days now and uh, we can't get it off the trailer because our car, our truck, is in the shop after we uh, broke down up on the mountains. So, very frustrating. I feel like a, a kid in a candy shop that can't uh, try anything, touch anything. So, it's very frustrating. But we are trying to find someone that has a um, similar turning hitch or at least a pickup truck. Uh, and uh, we'd be willing to uh, help us and hook up the trailer so it won't keep it uh, while we get the Humvee off. Yesterday we tried to do it, but somebody parked behind the trailer, so completely blocked uh, the, the, uh, the ramps and, and the trip back of the trailer for the whole day, so we couldn't do anything. So what I did last night, I parked the courtesy vehicle we got from the dealership uh, right behind the trailer. So that won't happen again and then I can get Mr. Hundy off the trailer. So uh, yeah, see how it's uh, pan out. So now the Humvee is finally off the trailer, thanks to our dear neighbor from Laramie Peak Roofing. Thank you so much for helping us, we appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please stay tuned for upcoming videos 
and don't forget to subscribe and like and stay up to date with our journey and projects we are working on.